summer's over and it's time to prepare for winter. Come with me as we crack on with some essential tasks, tour my garden and look at a few ideas to keep those crops coming even through the coldest months. Let's start with the last of the summer staples, some of which are still cropping, including these runner beans here. They're a little bit past their best and there are no more flowers, which means there's no more beans coming. So I think what I'm gonna do is finish harvesting them and then freeze them. And I'll do that by blanching or boiling them vigorously for about two minutes and then cutting them down into about inch sizes, cooling them off uh, first and then freezing them in bags. But I'm gonna leave one or two plants here to go completely brown and to go straw colored so the beans inside mature and I'll use those for next year's seed. There's a few, uh, cucumbers down here as well which I'm also going to process somehow but over here I'll take you to my bean teepee where I've got my French or fine beans uh, and they're still in really good nick actually and still very much usable you can see here they're a good size they've got a lovely lovely snap sound to them as well I'm gonna pick loads and I'm gonna make um, dilly beans in other words you stack them up in your um, uh, kiln jar or your mason jar and then I'm going to add, a, I think, some garlic, which I've got, some chilli flakes, some dill, a bit of uh, pickling salt, and then a mixture of half water, half vinegar. And then that'll all get sealed up and canned. It's going to be absolutely beautiful. I did them last year, and I'll pop a link to it down below because we actually did a video on that. And then the other great trooper of the summer have been these two really massive um, uh, zucchini or courgette plants. They've actually turned into um, to marrows now. They're really whoppers. And um, I've got some plans for them. I'm going to perhaps, um, well, stuff them. Yeah, I've got two really big ones here. I'm just gonna cut one off and show you. How about that bad boy? Look at that. It's, um, it's kind of got a good solid skin. So um, it might keep for a couple of weeks, but it will need using up quite soon. So, um, you know, stuffed marrows is the obvious thing, but if you guys have got any ideas for recipes that you've tried with marrows to bring them to life, then do let me know, I'd love to know. Right, uh, I've left these standing. Um, they have finished a couple of weeks ago. They're the corn, obviously, and I have to say I was really pleased with them. We've got lots of lovely, pretty well-filled cobs, uh, but now it's time to rip them out. I've planted some um, chard already, but I'm going to be planting sprouting broccoli here to um, take me through to next, uh, next spring. So I'm just going to cut them all down. I'm going to leave the roots where they are because these obviously aren't frost hardy. They will just rot away over the winter and I'll plant my purple sprouting broccoli in between them. So it just contributes extra organic matter to the soil. And then these are going to go on the compost heap. Anyway, I'll crack on with it. Here are some sprouting broccoli I planted about two months ago, and they've really come on. They were flopping over, so I've banked up soil around the base of the plants to offer them a bit more support, driven in a cane and then tied them to it, and that'll keep them off the ground so that they thrive a bit more. They are actually shaded a bit by the, uh, the bean arch here and the um, apples ahead. The bean arch is gonna get cleared imminently and that'll let in a lot more light and they should thrive uh, because of that. It's really a time of abundance. And I'm gonna pick this uh, lovely cooking apple for tea and uh, do something creative with that. So the tomatoes did get clobbered by blight. So there were lots of green tomatoes which I made into green tomato chutney and fried green tomatoes and they're really tasty actually. I'll pop a link to it in the video description below. Some of the green tomatoes I picked have now actually turned red, so I'm really pleased about that. But I'm gonna make another batch of green tomato chutney because I've already finished it, it was that delicious. And I might chuck in a few more chilies that I've grown myself and I'll show you those in a minute. This in the meantime is going to be planted with winter salads. So things like Claytonia, mash or lamb's lettuce, um, winter lettuces, all sorts of lovely leaves. So I've got some coriander in here or cilantro already, 
and uh, it's going to be completed with all these lovely leaves. Can't wait. In the meantime, these beautiful marigolds here are adding a little bit of cheer. Now let's get on and show you some of the winter crops I've got growing, starting with the kale over here. I planted these kale about two months ago and they've grown really fast. Some of the leaves are ready to take, so I'm going to go ahead and harvest some for my supper. Just uh, clicking off a few leaves like this, the lowest leaves from the stem. Some of them have got a bit um, chewed up mainly by butterfly caterpillars, but that's fine because they've gone now. So any growth now is going to be fine without all these holes in. There might be a little bit of slug damage, but I think it's mainly caterpillar damage. So just going to snap off the worst of that and then take a few leaves for tea. And these are my celeriac. And I have to say, I'm really pleased with them. They're, oh, what's that? About five inches or so, um, 12 centimeters across. They're really strong. They've got a bit of um, leaf minor damage, but that's absolutely fine. Uh, I can't wait. It's my first time growing celeriac actually. So I'm gonna mash it up with uh, some of the stored potatoes I've got and maybe some of the carrots and make a really interesting mash for the top of shepherd's pie. And I've got the last of the carrots here and uh, I'm just sort of picking them out as I need them. Some big, some small, but all in really good condition actually. You know what, carrots are so cheap, but the reason you grow them is the flavor. Absolutely supreme. Anyway, and then behind me here, we've got the leeks. I planted these as small plug plants because I didn't have the space to plant them when I should have in early June. I was worried they wouldn't do so well, but we've had some really nice warm weather and they seem to have responded, Rosie, no, they seem to have responded really well to that and have thickened up. So I think with the zucchini and courgette plant removed, they're gonna really have all that extra light and space and they're gonna thrive. And I should have some uh, tasty stems to harvest. Behind me, you may notice this bed is empty. I thought we could plant it together. I've ordered in some spring cabbage plants and they're good to plant, they just come in. I'm gonna add some well-rotted manure here and then plant them for something tasty to look forward to next spring. Let's go and do it. So I'm using the last of the well-rotted manure that I bought in this bulk bag here. Oh look, you can see there's loads of little worms in here. This is great stuff and it's still got that lovely farmyard pong, so, ah, oh, brilliant. I tell a true gardener, they get excited about worms, I mean, but they are wonderful creatures and this is wonderful stuff. Now I'm planting some spring cabbages here. They arrived last week and they're a little bit leggy, but that's fine. I'll just plant them a fraction, a little fraction deeper so the stem's supported. And they should do just fine. Probably on the generous side for spacing them here, but that's just fine. And I've got a space here, so I'm just gonna pop this extra kale in because it's my favorite brassica of all very versatile, in it goes. And there we are. Something that was really exciting recently were the neighbors opposite were having some garden work done and chipping up a lot of prunings, which they were actually gonna throw away in a skip. I went over and talked to the landscapers and said, guys, could you barrow it down here? And they did, and I got a whole load, which I've topped up the paths with. Oh, it's lovely. It's got some pine in there. It has a beautiful smell. But it's great because this will keep the paths from turning into a muddy quagmire over the winter. And of course, as it breaks down, it will add nutrients which will help all of the deeper rooted crops at the edges of the beds. So I'm really chuffed with that. And I've got some more over there ready to spread later on. Right, should we go to my greenhouse where I've got some more winter veg ready to plant out? as well as the last of the frost tender crops. Come on, let's have a look. The greenhouse really is in a state of flux at this time of year, with the last of the summer crops still going quite strong and some winter crops still waiting here to plant out. These tomatoes were a bit late finally cropping, 
but they're going, still going thick and fast. So there's plenty to pick. So I thought I'd pick some now because I want to make another batch of passata or tomato sauce for the freezer and some for my daughter's tea as well this evening. Got to hunt around for them. Some are hiding right at the back. Now you might notice over here a little bit of blight damage and that got in through the window from some tomatoes outside. I thought the whole plants would be done for, but because it obviously doesn't rain in here and I water right at the base, it actually hasn't spread. So I've got off pretty lightly. It goes to show if you can, offering tomatoes some form of protection really does help with the old blight. Over here, I've got some eggplant or aubergine. They're not quite ready to pick yet, but it's my first time actually growing them and I'm pretty chuffed. With the tomatoes, the eggplant or aubergine, and some garlic, I think it's the perfect um, ingredients for a delicious homemade moussaka. Now these eggplants were grown uh, grafted, so they're on a stock, and that's given them some extra vigor. And yeah, there's sort of different varieties here. So I'm quite pleased with them, and I've got loads of different peppers. What I love about the peppers is the variety. I got one of each different type and they're all coming good now. Look at this beauty here, purple gusto. So much in the way of different shapes, sizes and flavors. They need another couple of weeks, most of them to color up, but they're getting there. Should get them before the winter and I hope, I hope to be able to overwinter them. And then over here are our winter crops some more sprouting broccoli just to gap up as and when, and then all these lovely salad leaves. There's mustards, rocket, mizuna, uh, winter lettuce, uh, claytonia or winter purslane, all sorts. They're gonna go out where the tomatoes were, but I'm also going to be planting up some salad trays to keep in here. And that's actually gonna be a topic of our video next week. So you won't want to miss out on that one. Now there's a little bit of tidying to do outside, so I'll just show you what I'm gonna get up to out there. I'm a little bit embarrassed to be honest with you at the, uh, the mess around here, but quick tidy up, that's what autumn is for. Uh, I rip out the worst of these weeds here, and once I've done that, get my trusty hoe here and just kind of scratch along here and clear the paving around. Anyway, I'll crack on with that in a bit. Also, the leaves are starting to fall now. It's full. And I'll be raking up some of those in where they need to on paths and so on. But I always leave piles alone in out of the way nooks and crannies for hibernating mammals. So that's very important. Always leave them there. And also for amphibians like toads, they like to uh, hunker down in the old leaves. Finally, I thought we'd pop down to this wildlife area of mine. It's really great, I love it. Um, now's the time to cut all this long grass though, late summer into autumn or fall. And the reason we cut it is to en enable the wildflowers that are here to thrive. So for that, because it's quite long now for the lawnmower, I'm using my handheld scythe. And any creatures that are in there are less risk of getting sort of strimmed and cut in half. Now, this is kind of mimicking grazing with certain species of sheep and cattle that chew up the grass and that makes the grass, weakens it somewhat so that the wildflowers can uh, have a fairer advantage. All of the material that I take here is going to go on my compost heap where they will return all their nutrients and that will eventually feed my edible crops. The idea is to very gradually impoverish the soil which the wildflowers actually prefer, and that gives this rank grass, makes it weaker so they can compete. And over here is my little wildlife pond. Doesn't look like much, but it's had lots of frogs and toads in here, and I think it's helped with the garden because you see them in the long grass, often hopping around there. And it might be a coincidence, but I've had very few problems with uh, slugs generally, and I see them in the veg patch sometimes, so I know they're keeping on top of things. Funny thing was actually the other day, these are my other pair of gardening crocs. <coughs> I went to put my feet in them, but I thought, what's that in there? 
and took my foot out and slumped, somewhat recalled in horror when a, to a toad frogged out, a big fat old toad. And he's kind of left some of his uh, fecal deposits in there, a bit gross, so I'll need to wash these. But he was using it as a little hidey hole in the heat of the day. And that's rather wonderful, isn't it? There's all these little nooks and crannies around the garden. You provide as much wildlife habitat as you can. And then sometimes they just move into your shoes. What can you do about it? I love gardening with nature. How do you garden with nature? Let me know in the comments below. And we're actually planning content now for next growing season. So if there's something you'd like to see, do drop me a comment below to tell me and we'll take that on board. Please do subscribe, hit the notification bell as well so that we can carry you along for the next garden tour. And if you'd like to grow more in the winter and you'd like to know how to do it, please do check out this playlist. I'll catch you next time.